Hello everybody and welcome back to Christo's Comprehensive Guide to Hearts Iron 4. So, since you last saw me, uh, two years have passed, or was it three? Three years about have passed, and uh, as you can see, the glorious German Reich is not quite as we left it. So, uh, in the last couple of years, what I've basically done is just gone through the German focus tree. We've done all kinds of stuff in here, most significantly for the changes on the map, we've done this section here. We've d done uh, Anschluss, we've demanded the Sudetenland, we've done the First Vienna Award, Fage Czechoslovakia, demand Slovenia and reassert Eastern Claims, and right now, we're doing a focus called Danzig or War. In a mere 34 days, uh, we will say to the uh, recently independent nation of Poland, give us Danzig or give us death, and they will respond death, at which point we shall give it to them. So. What I'm now going to do is show you how you set up this. This is how I would like to be set up before I complete that focus. I want to have uh, a big, a relatively large army holding what's called West Wall. West Wall being this line of forts here. You can tell there's a... Oh god, why are there no forts there? West Wall should add 2014... Oh, there they are. Sorry, I was just clicking on the wrong tile. Oh, I did West Wall after I... Uh, <laughs> before I remilitarize the Rhineland. That was a mistake. Okay, so take this focus before you take this focus because this focus adds forts on the border but uh, I did it while well, this area was still demilitarized and so it didn't add forts just here. Let's just pop down some forts. Remember to do that. You go construction, click on land fort, hold down control to put them at the top of the queue. We'll just quickly throw down some forts. Uh, up there as well. Probably not necessary, but it's going to be a more accurate simulation of how you're going to play. So you're going to put a relatively large number of men over here to hold this fort wall against the French. Uh, the French probably won't be able to break through this. This is a fairly lackluster defense. We could do with maybe four, but we're, uh, this isn't the final model we're going to... because uh, I'm going to set it all up for you now. Now I could try and explain how it is and explain how you set things up and you could just see how it goes, but uh, what I'm going to do is just delete all these plans and then redo them from the beginning, so you'll be able to understand exactly how you use them. So, uh, what we want is a defense against France, a very lackluster defense against the Benelux in case of any aggression from those guys. Again, same for Denmark. And then the, the vast majority of our forces are going to be a raid on the Polish front. What we want is a big line of infantry, both here and in the Konigsberg pocket. And then we're going to have uh, our tanks deployed here and here. The idea of the tanks is we're going to push in here, take Lodz, take Warsaw, and pocket this whole area. Pocketing is where you cut an area off from the rest of the country. We can crush in here and here. These guys are going to be isolated, alone, and vulnerable. And that's when we will kill them. So now what we're going to do is uh, just delete all the armies. So we have no one assigned. And we're going to get all of the divisions here. Now, all the divisions in the world, except for the tanks. What I'm doing to do this, by the way, just scroll out, simply box select everyone. Then uh, hold down shift, left click on the tanks to deselect them. And you could also left click on them again to select them again. So deselect all the tanks. Now this is all the infantry we have in the whole game. Click on this button, create a new army. And we're going to give it a general, who is going to be the wonderful Rundstedt. And he is going to command our main infantry forces. Now, uh, what we're going to want is probably about three guys per tile down here. And of course, I could just select these guys and put them on the front line, but that's not how it's going to be because, you know, they're only here because we've already done this. So we're going to want about, let's say, four people per tile holding against the French. So one, two, three, four. how many tiles are there? One, two, three, four. It's eight. Four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six. Ah. Seven. Eight. Oh, and it actually happens to be all of these guys here. <laughs> okay, now, to create a front line, a front line is these one of these, what you do is you press this button here, right? You click on that, and then you click kind of basically just near the front you want it to be on. And by front, I mean a border between your country and someone else's country. So you hover near it, and then you left click. Or you can click this button and then right click on one tile and drag. So let's say you just wanted it like that. You could do that. And then if you want to edit a front line, hold down Alt, right click on it, drag it down some more like that. These buttons are slow and inefficient. You want to become a master of Hearts of Iron 4, don't you? You need to use keyboard shortcuts. Z opens up the front line. And so it's very quick. Z, left click. There's your front line. Nice and simple. Uh, you can just do that very easily like that. You can also hit 
sorry, delete this one is the one that I actually don't use a hot <laughs> shortcut key for because delete's too far away and I knock over my microphone if I move my hand across. So, Z, right click and drag. You can also do that. <clears throat> Sometimes it's going to be a bit finicky because if we were over here, for example, the game thinks I want to draw a front line against Luxembourg. So what we want is a front line against France. So to be sure, just hover over France, left click. Nice front line against France. Now we want an attack plan. An attack plan is useful uh, for two reasons. Mostly one reason, but there are two reasons. To make a front uh, offensive line, click on this. <coughs> Excuse me. And then right click and drag a line. And basically you're saying push to that line. So that's the plan here. Push to that line like this. Or again, hold down Alt and it gives you these two buttons. You can click and drag them into weird and wonderful shapes. Generally, just make it pretty. There we go. Sorted. Now, an attack plan, as I said, is useful for two things. First off, you can this, click this button to activate all the attack plans that Rundstedt has in his army. This starts moving, and uh, if we were at war, these men would start beginning attacks, which they would lose, because this is the Maginot line with level 10 forts. A level 10 fort gives a negative 150% to attack, which is quite hard to overcome. No, it's it's po not, it's possible. That doesn't just set your attack to zero. If you had a modifier of plus 200%, then you still have 50%. The more important thing, this starts all the plans, this stops all the plans. If you click on the army, hold shift, left click, and left click on the plan, that starts that plan. The reason that I'm going to kind of brush over that is because you should not activate attack plans. <clears throat> this is the first, what I would call, mildly advanced strategy that I'm going to teach you. There are good players that activate attack plans in risky situations, and they are wrong. You should not do that. Uh, when you activate an attack plan, you hand over control of your units to the AI. You are better than the AI, and that may not be true for some of you, because you're just beginning. Very shortly, however, you will be better than the AI. Trust me. The AI's control over units is not very good. You, by microing it, by giving your specific instructions to the units, you will become very quickly better than the AI. So you don't want to activate an attack plan, you want to do it manually, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. <clears throat> So, the second bonus that attack plans give is far more important, and that's a planning bonus. <clears throat> this bar here, just to the right of your experience level, represents how much planning bonus you have. We have taken the grand battle plan uh, doctrine. I'll talk about that in my uh, tech video, which probably might be the next one or the one after that, uh, where I talk about how, which doctrine to take in which scenario and that kind of thing. But for now, just know that we have an 80% max plan preparation bonus. What that means is that if we let these guys sit on this front line for long enough, they will accrue this bonus up to 80%, which they currently have because they've been sitting there for ages. Now, that means that all of their stats on the offensive will be increased by 80%. That's enormously significant. Enormously significant. So, um... What you want to do is have them sitting on a front line with an attack plan until they have a full bonus, and then you launch your attack with your huge high attack bonus and charge through the enemy. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, let's continue assigning men. So, to hold the Benelux front, we're going to need one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven men. So, let's just grab U5, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Sorted. Remember to draw front lines. You're going to hit Z and then left click. Now, this is a bit more complicated here because you can't draw front lines across multiple countries unless they are puppets of each other. You don't need to worry about what that means if you don't know. It's not very relevant at this point. Now, so what I'd like to do is just draw a front line that goes from here all the way up here. Can't do that because there's three countries to deal with. So don't worry about Luxembourg. Just put a front line on the Belgium and the Netherlands and then shorten your one against the Netherlands by one. It's a little finicky to select here when you hold down Alt. The lower one is actually the Netherlands front line. You can tell by right-clicking and holding, and it'll show you which one you're actually going to move. You're going to shorten the Netherlands front line by one like this. We're going to need four here. One, two, three, four. Sorry, to deselect, hold Shift and left-click like that. Four down here, seven here. That will mean that we have one here, 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 and here from these guys, and then one in each of these from these guys. If we did this, the front lines would what I call overlap. So this, if you hover over it, you see the green hatched line? That's the area it's going to defend. If you hover over that, 
and this one, and this one, they both highlight this tile, which is why we're going to move this one north like that. The reason it's orange if you do this is because it doesn't have enough men to put one in every tile. Here it's green, it does have enough men. Uh, to select a front line, okay, something I missed with the attack plans, excuse me, let's delete this front line. If I just have no one selected, I just select a random unit and then try and draw attack plans, it's going to give it to the nearest army plan like that. To do that, I'm just hitting X to draw attack plans and then right clicking to position it. What you want to do is hold control, right click on a front line. That selects the front line and all the men attached to it. Now if I draw an attack plan, even if I draw it up here, no, I'm wrong. It always draws it on the closest one. Never mind. Forget I said anything. <laughs> so you hit X and that draws the attack plan. Let's say you actually wanted this attack plan for whatever reason to be on this front line. You hold down Alt. You see this green line here, this green ha line of green hatched ones. Left click and hold drag it to another front line. It doesn't work because uh, this is going through two countries. Give me a second. Okay. Right click, hold down alt, left click, drag it behind another front line, and that switches which front line has this attack plan. You're going to need to now select all the units on this front line and assign them to the attack plan. Because you can have units on a, on a front line that aren't assigned to attack plans coming out of that front line. The reason that's possible is so that you can have multiple attack plans coming out of one front line. Which is almost never a good idea, incidentally. So, right. let's just fix this up here. There we go. Okay. So, now we've got one these, and we want to give them all attack plans. You should always, under all circumstances, have an attack plan on your front line. There are two reasons for this. Number one, you build the planning bonus, and there is no negative to having the planning bonus. So even if you don't think you're likely to attack on that front, this is World War II, things change, you might want to attack on that front. So you should always have a planning bonus. If you're just sitting on a front without a planning bonus, silly, don't do it. Second reason you should always have an attack plan. If your men are set to aggressive, which means they execute battle plans, if you activate, activate them like this, more aggressively, and you don't have an attack plan, they will just start attacking willy-nilly. We don't want that. Now, we set up our western defences here. Let's head over to the east. Now, we first off, let's put our tanks in another army. There are two ways to control tanks, two, two main ways. I favour... Uh, I, I go back and forth, honestly, but I'm going to show you both ways. First off, you can put them into a separate army from your main infantry. Makes them easy to find, easy to distinguish, easy to give separate battle plans to. Let's work out, let's see how it works using that first. Now, uh, we're going to get all of these units, basically all of the remaining units around here, right. on this area that haven't already been sent off to, uh, to, wet to the west to help defend against the French, like this. And we're going to put all of these men, not the tanks, all of these men on a battle plan, front line against Poland, and we're going to give them an attack plan, which is going to be very simple, something like this. It doesn't matter where this attack plan is if you're going to manually command the army. It doesn't matter one little bit, so don't worry about it. We're going to do the same in the Konigsberg pocket. And we're going to put this attack plan something like this. There we go. This looks a bit ugly. Don't worry about it. It really doesn't matter. If I was playing single player and no one was watching, I would make my attack plans incredibly simple. I would do something like this. Because it doesn't matter where these lines are. In fact, let's do that. Let's make it slightly simpler for ourselves. It's just easier to look at if you do this. Just to get the lines out of the way, honestly. So, now the tanks. Tanks get their own general. And uh, we probably will give them a general rather than a field marshal. The difference between generals and field marshals is that field marshals get different traits, gain experience slower, and can command infinite units. Generals can only command up to 25 units before they start receiving penalties. When I say units, I mean divisions. Erich von Manstein is the best tank commander that the uh, Germans have at the beginning. They have Trickster, which gives them more reconnaissance, army speed and armor division attack, sorry, armor speed and armor division attack, and fort attack bonuses. He's very good. So we're going to use him. Now, the plan to take out Poland is that pocket, remember? So we're going to have a two division long front line. You can stack front lines on top of each other. And that's going to rush south to Warsaw. Let's make them yellow. And then we're going to have two down here that's going to rush up to Warsaw. So what's going to happen is the tanks are going to lead the charge, the infantry is going to support it, and we're going to attack up here and down here, just cutting Poland in half. Sound good? Sounds good. Now, the next thing we need to do is port defense. Sorry, I've missed the uh, Danish board. It's very quickly just established that. There we go. 
so that's select the units. Let's just do it slower for you with the explanation. Select the units, hit Z, left click on the front line, hit X, right click at the place you want them to go. There we go. Sorry, I'm just showing my cheat there, which gave me the army experience so that we could design divisions easier in the previous episode. So, select the units you're going to want to use for port garrisons. Playing against the AI, one is usually sufficient, two is plenty. Let's use 20, we have plenty. Sorry, let's use two, we have plenty of men. So what you want to do is select your men, hit C. C opens up the fallback line mechanic. Fallback lines are usually used for things like this. You're falling back, the Soviets are gaining huge amounts of ground, you're going to fall back behind this river and hold them back. So what you do is you do this, and then the men will deploy to this line as if it's a front line. Like they've deployed over here, they're going to rush back and deploy to this line. We're going to use fallback lines for something slightly different today, which is defending ports. Hit C, right click, and then they will assign to that. Something I haven't mentioned, these guys, see the exclamation, red exclamation mark, they have no orders. That means if I make a new order with them selected, they'll automatically assign to it. If I wanted this guy to go and help with the Wilhelmshaven defense, the front line, the forward line is a bit hard to see, but it is hidden under there. What you do is you select the unit, hold down control and left click, right? If you hold down and right click, you select the units attached. If you select someone and left click, you assign him to this. Same to assign him back up there. Anyhow, so what we're gonna do is put a fallback line like this, so you select the units, hit C, right click, and just right click on that one tile. So hold them, C, right click, and just move the cursor a little bit to establish the fallback line. There we go, like that. We've got a fallback line on every port that we own with two guys defending it. Those guys are gonna sit there and build up entrenchment. Entrenchment is this. They have a 37% entrenchment bonus. That's very much like a planning bonus, except it works on the defensive, not the offensive. Okay, so they're going to have a 37% bonus to their defense and their attack while they're holding this port if anyone tries to naval invade. Excuse me. It's unlikely that we'll be naval invaded over here, but it's possible. So it's a good idea to have port defenses on all of these guys. So... Now that we have everyone assigned, there's no little red icon here, which means we haven't got units assigned. Let's modify our government. Don't worry about this. This is not uh, this is not what we're dealing with today. We're going to look into uh, the how the politics system works in a future episode. Okay, so I think we have everything set up and ready to go on the army. So that's how you set up your army. I'll show you exactly how to command it in uh, just a minute. But now let's set up our navy and our air force. First off, the air force. Click this button up here or hit L to open up the Air Force overview. Now, this is a little counterintuitive, but step one is to select everything by holding shift and clicking down the list like that. That will open them all up like this. Whole mess of ranges. These are the ranges of the, uh, of the planes. And then delete them all. We just got rid of a whole Air Force. Surely this is a disaster. No, what we did was we said to all our planes, stop being in air wings, go back to the reserves, and uh, sit in, you know, warehouses until I tell you where to go. Now, let's tell them where to go. So, F3 opens up the air map mode. These are all our air bases, these things here. What we're going to do is put planes in the air bases, ready to deploy them to these areas. Air planes are not like units. Planes don't move tile to tile. They deploy to regions. So to begin with, what we're going to want to do is probably deploy some fighters over here to make sure we don't get bombed by the Allies. And then we're going to deploy all our fighters and our bombers over here to help us take Poland. So pick a nice central airbase in Western Germany, like this one. And then you click this button here, or hit N. Don't, sorry, I've got Facebook in the background. Let me close that so we don't get more bloops. There we go. Uh, then you're going to assign fighters. The way you do that is you hold down Shift to move two, click that twice, 200 fighters, hit OK. We're going to use the newest fighters we have, which in this case is fighter ones, and assign them here. They're now going to deploy. They'll be there by the 18th of May. <clears throat> We're going to do the same thing up here. Click new wing, hold shift, press it twice. 200 fighters up there. Once these guys arrive, that's their range, we're going to assign them to northern Germany, and they're going to do a mission called interception. Interception attacks enemy bombers. So let's go here. Interception. That's just to hold off any allied fighters, sorry, allied bombers out of our lands over there. Now over here, we're going to be a lot more aggressive. So into this airbase, we're going to put a bunch of our remaining fighters, all of our remaining fighters, in fact. This airbase, by the way, can hold 1,200 units. You can go over that, but you shouldn't. So let's put some guys in here. 
Uh, 600 should be plenty, and we're going to leave some fighters in reserve. As our fighters die, and they will, they'll be replaced by the fighters that we've kept in reserve. We're also going to deploy some wings of bombers. You cannot mix the planes that are in one air wing. It has to be all fighters or all the other types. If I look at the tech tree, I can most easily show you the different types of planes. So, we have close air support. Fighters, naval bombers, heavy fighters, tactical bombers, and strategical bombers. For the purposes of this, we're just going to worry about tactical bombers and fighters. Fighters establish air superiority. They make sure there are no enemy planes in the area. Tactical bombers attack enemy units. So we're going to deploy two wings of 400 oops, tactical bombers. Now we're going to select all these by just box selecting or by clicking and holding shift and selecting them all. Note that the tactical bombers have an extraordinarily large range compared to the fighters. Now we're going to right click on Western Poland to assign them. And then we're going to left click on the missions we want them to carry out. In this case, air superiority and close air support. Close air support means that they target enemy units and they prioritize. Ooh, excuse me. And they target enemy units when you're in combat. So if we attack, our planes are going to help. Okay. And that is the air force, basically. You're going to want to keep coming back to this screen. These regions will go green when we have air superiority, red if we don't have air superiority, if the enemy has air superiority, sorry, and grey if no one has air superiority. At the moment, our planes haven't actually deployed, which is why they're not already green. Now let's deal with the navy. The navy, it's vitally important you don't box select and delete them all, because that will just kill the ships. We're going to send our whole navy to Schleswig Holstein. Now, first things first, select them all, hold control and right click on Schleswig Holstein. The, what that does is it sets Schleswig Holstein as their home port. That means that they are supplied from here and they return here for repairs. Now right click on it to actually send them all there. Let's give them a second to arrive. Now all our ships have arrived here. Press G to combine all the units, in, all the fleets into one, the Kriegsmarine. Now we're going to separate off our submarines because they do a totally different task from everyone else. Everyone else, we're going to give a feel uh, a. a uh, Admiral, just the same way that you do normally. You click on the icon, then you click on the one you want to use. We'll give them this guy. And now we're going to give them an order. What I want these guys to do is try and give us naval supremacy in the Baltic Sea. Basically, fight the Polish Navy. We're going to have to keep an eye. If the British Navy comes through here, which they can, uh, then we'll come up with an issue. Naval um, straits, like this, the Danish belts, are uh, a bit, bit more advanced. We'll deal with them in future. The uh, subs on the other half, or other half, other hand, I think, we're going to split into two by pressing S, or you could hit this button, and we're going to use them to convoy raid. Convoy raiding means we're going to attack the enemy mer enemy's merchant ships, basically. To convoy raid, you press this button, and then you select the tiles you want them to go in. Red hatched area means out of range. The easy way to assign multiple ships to different orders is to do this. So you select both of them, give some of them an area to convoy raid, deselect them, Press this button to cancel the order, press it again, and then pick the next area you want them to convoy raid. And now one's going to go here, and one's going to go here. So we're going to try and destroy any merchant ships in these regions. Best of luck to you. And now we've set up our army, we've set up our air force, we've set up our navy, we are good to go. This guy is just deployed, we're still training lots more men, so let's put him on the front. Okay, and now we simply wait for the Polish to refuse our ultimatum. Simple enough. Shouldn't take too long. So, to check around, everything looks pretty good. Note that the units here aren't spread evenly. That's because some of these tiles can be attacked from more directions than others, and they also prioritize victory points over non-victory points. This tile here can be attacked from three directions. That's a weak spot in our line. This one here, however, can only be attacked from one direction, so it's put five here and three here. The reason you can, it's a weak spot to be attacked from more than one direction is that means more enemies can attack you at once. Another tank, he can go here. I don't need to see the tiles to know what the, the units just know what they are because I know where they're deploying. So we've got five uh, light tank divisions under Manstein and 144 infantry divisions all being commanded by Rundstedt. Send you up here. All right, Danzig or war? Let's read it out, shall we? Danzig was German. Oh, whoops. Danzig was German, and Danzig has remained German, and Danzig shall be German from now on. If Poland does not cede the territory, we must prepare the German people for the inevitable war. Danzig and the surrounding lands will return to Germany, one way or another. Again, don't worry about research. I'm just going to explain it in a future episode. I've just done this very standard research path for this, uh, the purposes of this. 
Okay, Italy pursues closer bonds with Germany. So Italy wants to join our faction. By all means, Italy. For the purposes of your first few campaigns, you will want to cooperate with the AI. Once you get good at the game, you will quickly realize that the AI is not very good. And you will want to... Uh, you will want to not cooperate with the AI anymore. Uh, so, But for the purposes of this, we're going to have the AI in our faction. So Bulgaria and Italy have both joined the Axis and will join us in our wars. Next, focus. So we have uh, completed Danzig or war, which means Danzig has an event uh, saying, give us Danzig or give us death. And they have said, give us death, which means in a couple of moments, we're going to declare war on them. Let's just go with uh, army innovations too. That's fine. Okay, so in a couple of seconds... Uh, Posig, Poland refuses to cede Danzig. Despite our attempts to allow Poland to hand over Danzig peacefully, even vowing to give up our claims and other German territories in exchange, we have been met with a refusal. As expected, the world gives nothing to us that we do not seize by force. They know very well what the alternative is. The German Reich has declared war on Poland. Poland was guaranteed by the United Kingdom and by France, which means that France and the United Kingdom will join against us. If we unpause, we'll be hit by France and England coming in. And uh, instantly, you'll see that we have been the target of many vicious attacks by the belligerent Polish people. They're attacking us here, here, and here. So, one of our, our first attacks to actually see in this uh, tutorial. Let's have a look. So, we are winning, and it's 72. The numbers are the progress towards you winning the battle. If it gets to 100, you win. If it gets to zero, you lose. So, these are green because they are going in our favour. If they were red, they'd be going against us. Let's click on the battle and open up the actual battle screen. Ernst von Manstein is currently leading the defence in this part of the... Uh, this place... <laughs> state. The AI really shouldn't be attacking, we're much stronger than him. Why don't our panzers have armour bonuses? Ah, our, our panzers are being pierced! By the, uh, by the enemy infantry. We're using light tanks, which is why they're able to pierce us. These guys do not have very high armor. That's interesting. So they have a piercing of what? If you hover over it, you can see. They have 14.14 piercing, whereas we only have an armor of 8.999. So they are piercing us, which means we're not getting the piercing bonus. Other things you can see on this screen, we are currently experiencing an entrenchment bonus and a terrain bonus, which means that we are being... We have 57% better on our stats from that, and 25% better on some of our stats from that. They are experiencing a terrain penalty because they're attacking into the woods, which gives them 20% penalty to their attack and breakthrough. You can also see the organization and strength of the units. Organization, as we've previously discussed, is the, mor is the morale. They'll stop attacking when they run out of organization, or rather, they'll be forced to stop attacking when they run out of organization. They may stop attacking before they run out of organization. Strength is literally how much of their total stuff do they have. So if you look at these divisions, they're at 77% strength. That means they're missing 23% of their equipment. That's terrible. Having lower equipment just flat reduces your stats. So you can see if you hover over their attack, here are all the things affecting it. They're currently, their attack is being modified to 79% at uh, 79.4% of its original value due to terrain, knight, country, commander skill, planning bonus, Oh, attacker tactics damage. Now the attacker tactics damage comes from these. They've picked something that gives them plus five percent attack. To, ha, five percent tactic attack tactic damage. Why is that so hard to say? And we have picked something which gives the tactics movement down, which means it's less likely to change what tactics being used by both sides. Fifteen percent more less damage for them, and fifteen percent more damage for us. It's a great tactic, elastic defense that we're currently using against them. Don't worry about tactics. You can click on here and you can get a great long list of all the possible different tactics that could be used right now, but it's not an issue. So, we've got massive defense compared to their attack. We've got massive attack compared to their breakthrough. They're doomed. They're going to lose these fights. Let's unpause just for a moment. Slow it down, by the way. At peace, you want to run speed 5 99% of the time. At war, 3 speed, lots of pausing, in my experience. So let's wait a second. They've got all these fights and they're all going our way. So they've lost. Poland just joined the Allies. Italy wants to join our war. Oh, France has launched some assaults. Note that our defense over here is very high, and their attack is very low. Fort minus 42%. Forts give minus 15% per level. Their bonus that they give the defender is mitigated depending on how many directions they are attacked from. So if this fort is being attacked from three directions, it's going to be less valuable than otherwise. Still building lots of military factories. Good. 
Note that this fighting, while we've been winning heavily, has still damaged the infrastructure in the regions, and the infrastructure is now undergoing repair. Repair happens automatically even if you don't assign factories to it, but if you do assign factories to it, it goes super fast. Typically, don't assign factories to it. Okay, so we're under attack for the French over here, and it's time to make a push against the Polish. We're going to launch two simultaneous, sorry, three simultaneous offensives against the Polish. Do this while pause. First off, we're going to launch an attack south and reach this river by Warsaw. If we're lucky, we might even cross it. It's a big river, though, so it'll be tough. These guys are going to attack. First off, don't when you it's tempting to grab both these guys and attack here. No problem. That would leave this tile completely empty. That's a risk we do not have to take, so let's not. Let's get some of these guys. Just select them or just click on them. Hit S to split in half. It will always leave you selecting the larger... Uh, selection of units. If you split three in half, it will select two. If you split seven in half, it will select four. Split in half, get two of them. Come over here and cover us. Cover our backs while we advance here. Select the units, right click. Select the units, right click. Uh, one of you, so just hit S twice to select one, which we're going to stay here. Either click here, or if they're already attacking or moving forward, click H. H cancels the orders currently possessed by that unit. We're going to launch these two attacks straight south and see what we can do. In the south, we're going to launch an attack here. <clears throat> and we're going to launch an attack here. You can queue attacks even when you're under attack. Uh, this, these two guys have been launching a very ill-advised offensive against us here. That leave left them with almost no organization, so that attack's going to be a piece of cake. Next, Danzig. Danzig has a fort, and it has a big river if we attack it from this direction. But that isn't going to stop us. We're going to attack in from both sides, crush into Danzig, and take the city for ourselves. So, with the attacks queued, let's check out the air war. Currently, the enemy has deployed no planes, so we are currently absolutely toasting them. We have uh, total air supremacy over Western Poland, and they ha are not yet bombing us over here, so these guys haven't really come into play. The reason we don't have air superiority over here is because we're not, go we're not trying to get it. We're just going for this interception thing. This air superiority applies a big debuff to their breakthrough, except it's not for some reason. My guys are all in play. Maybe we have to wait a day before uh, before the planes actually start having an effect. Now let's unpause and watch these attacks begin here, here, and here. There they are. Now let's take a look at some of these attacks. Obviously they're going heavily in our favour. This one is already won. <laughs> Even the one hour it has started, as is this one. We're going to absolutely bulldoze in. Up here, it's much tougher going. Note that our attack has been modified down to 34.2% of its original value. That's a huge debuff that we're experiencing there. First off, it's night time. We launched our attack at 7 o'clock in the evening. That was foolish. We should have launched our attack at approximately 6am in the morning. Uh, if you want, you can turn on what's called the day-night cycle by hitting N which shows you exactly where it's dark and exactly where it's light right now. There are no seasons. This is, I, I believe... I, I, wait, is that wrong? Are there seasons? I don't think there are seasons. Um, ah, I'm not sure about that, actually. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I don't think there are seasons. I never go in the daylight cycle, because this is just... I hate this. It's really ugly, and when you're moving, it, it moves across the screen like in jumps. I'll, I'll show you. Like this which is just so ugly. But uh, generally, I think there aren't seasons. When it's If anywhere that's in this sh shaded area, you're going to get negative 50% on attack, whether you're defending or attacking. So generally, you want to launch the attack right about at this point. You have the maximum amount of time to do the damage while you're while you're in the light. Now, let's turn off the day-night cycle. It does look quite cool, but I don't think it's worth, worth having on. We're, we're still winning all our, all our defenses over here. Good. French doing an ahistorical uh, offensive at the beginning of World War II. So, we've won this battle, we've won this battle, and now our troops are moving in. If you hover over our troops, <clears throat> you will see he will reach his destination in seven hours. So, if we wait a little bit, there he is. Great. He can now join this attack on Danzig. But we don't want him to actually attack Danzig, because if he attacks Danzig, then once he's finished, he'll walk into it. We don't want him to do that, we want him to stay where he is. So, select the unit, hold down control, and right-click on the enemy unit. See how the icon is different here? That's because he's doing a support attack. A support attack gets involved in the combat, but when the combat is won, or indeed lost, stays where he is. These guys, once they arrive, are going to receive the same order. I know... And they're going to support attack here. That's going to make the, the battle on Danzig a piece of cake, once all those extra guys deploy in. Now, we've won this battle. Don't stop. These guys are going to keep pressing on south. <clears throat> Good thing about tanks is they're really fast. You want to take advantage of that speed. 
Something we should have done with our tanks. Let's just change our tanks' attacks plan. We should have used a spearhead plan rather than attack plan. The spearhead plan... See how we, when we advanced, it kept the unit line down here. I believe a spearhead plan doesn't keep spreading the front line, but I'm not sure. Let's learn together here. So, because we don't want the tanks to cover their backs. That's the infantry's job. We want the tanks to just prioritize pushing south as fast as possible. And then the infantry move in behind the tanks to cover them and provide support. So these guys keep going north. Okay. Danzig is crumbling beneath our attacks. Good. This guy keeps going north towards Warsaw. Lodz is about to fall. Okay, so the infantry have pushed in here. That's excellent. You keep going south. Lodz has fallen and with this final tile taken, Poland has been cleft asunder. These guys are now what's called pocketed. If we hit F4, note that they have very low supply. Let's, let's take a moment here to talk about supply. Supply flows from your capital. <clears throat> in this case, this region, because our capital is in this region. It flows from your capital to all these different places. Green areas are areas that you have, your allies have control over. So it goes from your capital, and if it goes trying to go all the way down to Milan, it goes from the capital to this region, 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 like that. Now, the supply that can get down to Milan is 88. It's 88 because the infrastructure in this region here only supports 62 supply going through it, which means to get to here, uh, we're well, saying 68 incoming, that's interesting, but so 68 are actually getting to here. It's 88 because there's also local supply, so local victory points and things increase the local supply, and then your incoming supply is controlled by how much you can get there. So you want, in order to get good supply here, a consistent chain of high infrastructure provinces all the way here. Oops. All the way here. If it was going by C, like it is over here, uh, well, it's not anymore because we just closed this pocket, but if it was going by C, like it is down to Bulgaria, it has to go all the way down here, and then it's going into a port, and it's going out to C, and round to here. Make sense? Same to here. You can see quite easily here. It goes all the way to a port, and then through this port just here, into uh, Albania. Make sense? If you want to increase your supply, you want higher infrastructure, you want higher level ports if it has to go through ports. Receiving and sending ports need to be upgraded. Italy wants to join the war. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to decline. We're going to just do this 1v1. Poland has such low supply because they are totally cut off from their capital. So their supply can't get from Warsaw to up here because they have no ports and we have a contiguous land border. Now, we've made a risky play here. Lodz is undefended. If they went in here, they would cut off our tanks from the south. But the infantry is moving in to support them, and the Poles are far too disorganized to launch an effective counter-offensive right now. Now that we have these guys pocketed, we can just leave them. They have extremely low supply. They're not going to be able to... There goes Danzig. They're going to have extremely low supply. They're not going to be able to effectively launch an attack against us. Notice that pocketing really mucks with your front lines. It's very annoying. But uh, you just want to... Adjust your front lines as necessary to deal with that. Let's merge these two infantry front lines by deleting one, assigning all the guys to the other, and doing that. So everyone is now assigned on this side to this front line like that. If you hover over it, you'll, it'll highlight all the guys that are assigned to it. Note that these two aren't for some reason, so we're going to select them, slot them in there. These guys are now all the ones that are assigned to it. So they can hold that front line. Now, time for the tank push for Warsaw. These guys can come up here. These infantry keep moving in to fill these gaps. Make sure that we don't get uh, any infant uh, Polish infantry getting any ideas and coming in here. Now, you guys should be assigned to this. And now these guys need an attack plan. I'm going to let these guys suffer for a while. They have no supply, which means after a little bit, uh, 72 hours, they're going to start suffering horrible penalties for not having any supply, including their organization literally just draining away to zero. So you guys have deployed. You can come in here. Still holding fine on the French front. Yep, it's been all fine and dandy over there. No Benelux aggression yet, but we'll see. The tanks are pushing past. We're going to just encircle Warsaw. The in let's, uh, let's move in here a little bit. What I'm doing here, pushing in here, is just widening this corridor we've established. <clears throat> that seems wise to me. They're, using, they're calling in all their puppets. The attack on Warsaw is not going anywhere, so let's stop that. You can come in here. Ah, oh, they've got some more guys over here. Let's uh, cease that attack. We're at risk of being pocketed here, so let's move some infantry up here. What I'm doing to queue 
actions, by the way, is you click on a unit, hold down shift, and then you can queue a path of whatever you want, like so. We're really overextending here. This attack is this attack is bold, but uh, I think it's going to pay off. See if these two tanks can take Warsaw. They may well be able to. I'm trying to cut in behind them like this, so that they can't cut in and uh, separate us. If you want to move guys fast, by the way, press B and right click, and they will strategically redeploy. Note that if I unpause, units who are strategically redeploying travel at 13 kilometers per hour, which is very fast, but they have n very low organization. It automatically sets the organization to five. Attack on Warsaw is going pretty well, and now these two can join in. I was going to use them to support attack, and likewise, this guy can support attack from the other side of the river. He's managing to push against five units, because our tanks are really good. And now these guys are going to low strength. They don't have enough piercing to get through this guy, which means he has the armor bonus. If you hover over here, it will tell you. Zero out of the eight, four enemy divisions can pierce this level's armor, which means we lose 50% less organization, take 50% less damage, and we do another 50% damage to their organization. Not to their strength, though, so it's not quite a 50% attack bonus. Let's just trade up, change our trade up a touch here. Don't worry again about trade. I will explain it all in the future. We're actually losing this fight. Now, there are two things we can do to stop that happening. Send a guy in to reinforce and counterattack. If you counterattack, what that does is gives the enemy this unit here. He's operating in both this unit defense and this one, which means he should have... Why doesn't he? Excuse me. There we go. He has a multiple combats penalty, which means he's 50% less good because he's effectively fighting two fights right now. So, the uh, big tank push on Warsaw is looking pretty successful, and it looks like we're going to take the tile directly behind it. Look at that. Warsaw encircled, and its defenders killed. Warsaw taken by the German Reich. Glorious. Now, let's redeploy our tanks to this northern bit. We don't want our tanks to cross rivers, generally. So, we'll give them a new attack plan. They're going to take these three cities over here. They're going to, with this infantry support. We're going to need to rush some guys into the areas that they were just defending. Because the tanks are going to move out, and we don't want the poles, poles to launch a counter-offensive. Now, let's deal with these guys. So we're going to launch some attacks from the north. And what you want to do with attacks is try and launch as many attacks as possible at individual tiles. So we want to attack these from multiple directions. The reason you do that is to concentrate force. Let's say you had a long front line like this, and you only had one guy on your side, and they only had one guy on their side. What that means is that if you just launch attacks all the way along the front, you'd be one to one. But, as the attacker, you have a unique advantage. You can launch the attacks where you choose, and you can concentrate your men. The advantage of concentrating your men is, let's say you have, uh, you know, they have one here, one here, and one here. And you have one here, one here, and one here. If these two both attack this one, they're just defending against you with one guy against your two. It's a very simple concept, but the concentration of force on a front line gives the attackers a big advantage, and you should make, uh, take advantage of it wherever you can. Don't advance here and here. Have them both attack here. These guys can attack here. Meanwhile, this one's empty anyway, so it doesn't make much difference. And so this one, the concentration of force that's available on this tile is ridiculous. We can attack it from three, four tiles here. That means we can seriously outnumber them. And the combat width is 200, because we're attacking from four directions. Which means we can deploy all six of our divisions against their two. So they're in real trouble. Note the low supply penalty they're suffering from. Fall of Warsaw. The German forces advancing in Poland to succeed in capturing Warsaw. Sporadic fighting continues in Praga and a few other districts, but the organized resistance in the city seems to have ceased. Another victory for the Vaterland. Glorious. Now, we're under attack here. Uh, they're not launching any serious counteroffensives to set this one, which we're holding, so I'm not not too concerned. I think our, uh, our infantry reinforcements will arrive before they're able to actually take any of these tiles back. Yep, yeah, there we go. They look like they're all getting there on time. Good. Now, uh, we are, this, incidentally, represents a naval invasion. Apparently they're launching a naval invasion of Konigsberg, and there is a naval combat on the Iberian, Iberian coast. Five of their destroyers are attacking our convoys. Uh, uh, sorry, our subs. So it looks like our subs are going down. They haven't attacked us in the Denmark Strait, the North Atlantic Ridge, or the Middle Atlantic Gap, though. So hopefully we'll be able to convoy raid them a bit there. Our ships... Ah, I failed to pay attention, and we lost a significant naval battle. Oh, no, well, we won, but it was close. So, there was a naval battle here. The British and French fleet engaged ours. We lost nine destroyers and one light cruiser. They lost uh, loads of destroyers, one light cruiser, and a bunch of planes. Not a good fight for us, uh, because we have much less ships than them. And note these ships are now damaged. They're going to go back to this port, and they're going to slowly repair. 
it's going to take a while. Okay, so we've won all these fights that I queued up over here. Let's launch some new ones. Again, try and concentrate force as much as possible where available. But generally, at this point, you've got them in a pocket. You can just do that, and they'll win. Overrun. That means we managed... So we attacked someone here. Sorry, we attacked someone here. They try... Uh, how do we overrun a t unit in this tile? I guess we attacked someone here. They tried to retreat to this tile, but we took this tile before they could retreat to it. That means they overrun, and instantly all of the units involved... All of their units die. All the units in that tile, of course. So the tanks can redeploy up to just this one section in the north. And let's have them do so quickly by selecting them all, pressing B and just deploying. Note that our supply in this area is low. That's because the local infrastructure is bad. The local infrastructure is bad because it's been damaged. Four damage levels here, one damage level here, two damage levels here. To fix that, find the relevant infrastructure, so plot, lods, and also, put them at the top of the list, and divert civilian factories to repair the infrastructure in this region. Another overrun. We're not getting lots of overruns because our air superiority is giving us a big advantage. Has it started applying here properly? There we go. Enemy air superiority, 37% less defense on the Polish divisions. Okay, let's go in here. Yeah, we're just absolutely rolling over this particular little pocket here. Another overrun. Overruns are where you deal the serious manpower casualties. Note that Poland has currently taken 95,000 casualties. And when we finish up closing this pocket, you will see that that number goes through the roof. So it's 95,000, remember, just a moment ago. And now, it's 179,000. They just took about 80,000 casualties in that area. Now, all these guys, don't need to be assigned there anymore. You can just go to the main front. One of you can just be so good as to close that off. And there we go. Western Poland has fallen. Now, in the near future, we're going to need some military police. Oh, don't mind this. We annex some countries which need to get their division templates. Let's train some military police. We're going to need maybe 40 of them to take Poland entirely uh, military police. So we're going to start training them. Right. You can go over here. Okay. Now, uh, the tanks are just going to give them a moment to regain some organization. Note their planning bonus has dropped. No plan survives combat. Uh, so every bit of time that you're in combat... Ooh, we're losing that defense. We might sway in our direction. We've got lots of reinforcements coming in, so I'm not concerned. Every day you're in combat and every day you're moving, you lose your planning bonus steadily over time. Let's really get these guys. So, concentration of force, remember. Let's see what we can do to push through here. Get some unassigned units. Let's just have any new units we have train. Deploy in Hessen and automatically go to this front line. Okay, so our tank's pressing in here. You can support up there. Great. You guys can also support attack in here. Okay. Um, Krakow is currently their capital. Let's launch a uh, an infantry offensive for Krakow. Take that out. That might well capitulate them on loan. We're going to keep pressing south here. One tank division alone is going to have some trouble. But with the assistance of another angle and some infantry support, we should be able to win that. No problem. Uh, you guys keep coming in here. Grand, you can go in there too. And then once you got there, awesome. The attack on Krakow is going well. Let's get some extra directions in here. And as soon as you guys take this tile, press straight on to Krakow. Like that, with the queued attacks there. Okay, you guys coming up there. You can sneak behind them. See if we can sneak behind these guys and pocket them using this tank division. Now, we're fighting in Western Poland mostly now. So let's redeploy some of our planes. Two of you guys and one of you guys fly over to Konigsberg and then deploy to Eastern Poland. You can see how close they are. Note that the... which is faster? The fighters are faster than the tactical bombers. Interesting. So uh, you guys also... Note this is or, this is uh, now contested, this air region. They have eight, 900 fighters deployed here. Let's move to Warsaw. More central air bases will have us see better results. So if we check out... We have 100% mission efficiency. They've got terrible mission efficiency. Probably because they're having to fly out of air bases that are a long way away. Our sneaking around the back strategy seems to be working fairly well so far. But we're pushing them back so fast that we're not going to actually encircle anyone using it. Let's push south for Brest-Litovsk. Grand. 
And another little pocket potential here. Let's see if we can uh, pull that off. If you would come down here and assist. That would be much appreciated. Okay, and the battle for Krakow is going our way. Let's take the outskirts of Krakow as well, in case we need to support from another direction here. The tanks are just romping through. They're, uh, they have, they, they've got nothing that can stop our tank push. Even though they could, they could, could, some of them could pierce our armor. Now, interesting strategy I'm using here. We're losing that fight, yes? So you're thinking, oh god, Christo, what are you doing? Stop the fight. No. Because what we're going to do is slowly... In fact, we are going to end up winning this fight. Well, not so good for the demonstration if we just win. <laughs> the plan was we pin them here while we sneak around behind them and then attack them from the back. And then we'll be able to kill them all because we've encircled them. But, as the case may be, we've actually just won. Because, probably because we took Krakow in the south and Brestatosk. So... Poland has capitulated, and that, more or less, is how you command units in Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, the air war was instrumental, it helped a great deal. If we check out this button up here, it will show us all the fights that we fought recently in this region. And if we hover over their manpower, in some cases we should see... Mm, not really seeing any. I guess we didn't have very many air uh, deployment here. There we go. So in this fight, in Cleis, right, they lost... Uh, uh, they lost 1,700 units. I'm looking at the bottom. Defenders, manpower lost. They lost 400 units to planes in that fight. So planes have been uh, have been pretty useful in a lot of our fights. They will have been very useful. Now what we want to do is just basically get all our men. Deselect the tanks. Deselect the tanks. And say, get over here. Some of you to the French front, but not really many. Most of you to the Dutch and the Belgian border. And then we will push through here and uh, launch a blitzkrieg into France and capitulate France. But that is beyond the scope of this episode. We're also going to want to get our planes and deploy them over here. And these planes and deploy them over here, probably to the Benelux region, to prepare for our push in there. But that is beyond the scope of this episode. Uh, I may do a future episode on that, but it's not, it's not vital. Uh, it's very similar. Tanks rush in, create pockets, infantry close the pockets, infantry hold the line, and back up the tanks. Okay, that's the end of this episode. If you have any questions, please do post them below. I'm uh, very, very happy to answer your questions. The next thing to do would be to assign military police to this area, take the Benelux and crush France. I hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. The next one, I think we're going to look at research, and then we're going to look at... Uh, we're probably going to look at research and logistics in the same episode, but see you then. Bye-bye.